All right, it's 10.02, so we'll get started. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining us today for this webinar. Um, my name is Jim Duncan, and I'll introduce myself more, but the, um, the topic for today is comparing methods and accessing data to new tools from the FEMC that we'll be talking about. Uh, these are recent releases and I'm really excited to share with this group. Um, I'm gonna turn my video off because you probably don't need to watch me staring at my screen, but I'll turn it back on when we get to our question section. Uh, just a few uh, um, reminders on mechanics. Uh, Teams is not the best platform to use for uh, webinars, but we're doing it anyways. And uh, just so you know, this is being recorded and we'll um, make this recording available as soon as it's uh, processed and ready. Um, I'd ask you to mute your mic and turn off your video. Uh, that can help others with their bandwidth issues as well. Um, you can access the controls for these by hovering over the Teams window and there's a little picture of a video. You can turn that off. You can turn off your mic. Um, and likewise, you'll also see there some uh, features including a raise your hand function um, which you can use to signal that you have a question um, there's also a chat box that um, you can type your questions into if you'd like uh, i will be doing my best um, to monitor the chat during the presentation uh, but i may miss it but i can always come back to those things so please feel free to use either of those functions to try and get my attention during the presentation and we'll have time at the end as well um, and uh that basically covers our webinar mechanics um if you want uh during our discussion period if you want a more webinar like experience you can pin my video while we're on the screen and since you can't see me well you only saw me briefly with my pandemic care this is me without my pandemic care and uh, as i said i'm the director for the fem scene on the research staff here at the rubenstein school and i'm presenting on this work but uh, this is really an effort among many of our staff and collaborators for those of you who are less familiar with the FEMC, uh, the Forest Ecosystem Monitoring Cooperative is a seven state effort to gather and synthesize trends in forest ecosystems and condition across the Northeastern region. Uh, we have been working for a long time in the Vermont, uh, in Vermont as a Vermont Monitoring Cooperative and more recently expanding out to the larger region uh, with some uh, history of work in New York, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts, and more recently in Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Maine. Um, we do this work with a couple of key uh, capacities. We do coordination work and uh, convening conferences and working groups around specific topics. We do on the ground monitoring, including forest health monitoring, air quality monitoring, meteorological monitoring on mountain uh, environments, and uh, funding some amphibian and avian demographic monitoring, as well as others. Uh, and then the third capacity is really around data and data integration, synthesis, access, where these two projects come together. Uh, today's topics, we're actually using this opportunity to talk about two somewhat related efforts that the FEMC's uh, undertaken. One is uh, what we're calling the Northeastern Forest Regeneration Data Network. And the second is the Continuous Forest Inventory Methods Comparison Tool. Uh, so we'll be going through each of these separately and then sharing some kind of next steps we have for these. The Northeastern Forest Regeneration Data Network is a culmination of a year and a half of work uh, related to understanding some pretty, or trying to make some progress on a pretty big topic with a uh, somewhat limited scope. The goals for the project were to identify sources of regeneration data in the Northeast, document and assess how these protocols uh, varied across the region, and then using that documentation, assess the suitability of each data set or project to uh, address a certain analysis. And then finally, develop an online and searchable resource that the cooperative can use to access this information. More generally, the charge that we get from the, we have a set of committees that tell us what to work on. And one of the charges or big topic issues that they identified is, uh, I need to understand trends in forest regeneration in the Northeast. And there are a lot of uh, reasons to be concerned about forest regeneration from climate change to land use history to uh, deer browse and herbivory pressure, as well as invasive species. Um, so there's a really big topic. Um, and when we started to look into this problem um, and how to address it, it was clear that uh, this is a really 
more of a research question with or potentially very complicated project. So we uh, looked at what FEMC could accomplish and focused on that um, ease of access and making it easier to find and compare data sets on forest regeneration in the Northeast. So our project is kind of taking the approach of getting people the information resources they need so they can then go and do the work of assessing trends in forest regeneration. We're thinking about the audience for this tool. Um, it's primarily targeted at the research community. Uh, we see this as a way to aid in addressing pressing questions. So we have a diverse projects on the left uh, that are being done, conducted for a variety of reasons around the region. Could be a experimental trial, could be a long-term monitoring project that happens to include seedlings and saplings. Um, we describe all of these within the Northeastern Forest Regeneration Data Network and then make that available to researchers uh, and they can find possibilities for new synthesis. So rather than having to start with year zero data or trying to figure out who might have original baseline data to compare against, the network can provide them a quick view of the types of data sets that are out there and what they might be usable for. Another audience that uh, I think it's a valuable consideration for this tool is the monitoring community. This can be a way to find new methods and um, other ways to, to upgrade those methods to increase comparability across programs. So if you have a, uh, if you're thinking about doing a regeneration monitoring program, this can be a tool to go to to find out who's doing uh, what within this field and how you might use their methods in your work. So after identifying uh, the programs that we could bring into this system, we assessed each of these protocols. So we got their, their data if possible and definitely got their protocol for data collection. And we assessed uh, four categories of things. First was overstory metrics, such as crown, crown condition, height, diameter of the trees, uh, the overstory trees on the plot. Uh, the second category is around sapling metrics. So this could be uh, browse impact, uh, species, mortality, anything related to saplings. Uh, similar, similarly, the seedlings, uh, smaller trees, um, could be assessed for damage or height or species. Um, and then finally, we looked at other metrics that might be related, such as insect and disease presence, invasive species, uh, plants, invasive plant species presence, uh, percent canopy cover, presence of dead wood, other things that might be related to uh, a regeneration question. So we identified a total of 109 attributes in these categories to analyze, and we went through each protocol and, and did a pretty detailed read on what's in there. So um, this just shows an example for seedling plot information. Uh, we looked at you know, how many seedling plots were there and what were they uh, assessing on those plots? How big was the radius? And is there any other details we have on the radius? For example, if it's a square plot, we identify the nature of that plot rather than a circular radius. Looking at seedlings, um, we here shows how we can identify yes or no, whether the seedlings were recorded and then uh, what the details are of that assessment, um, what their definition of a seedling is. So you can see already that we have different definitions across seedlings. At least this framework makes it easy to understand and identify and compare programs and see how their definitions of seedlings differ. And finally, we did uh, some analysis, which I'll talk about a little bit more. But uh, looking at based on all of this information, is it possible to calculate density? Is it possible to calculate composition? And if it isn't complete, then we can identify where the gaps are so people can more quickly understand the limitations of using a given data set for an analysis. The next step, uh, so once we have done this methodological analysis and identified all the attributes of the program that contribute to their assessment of regeneration, we could look at how suitable are these programs for different types of synthesis analysis. Um, and these are selected based on what we were hearing from cooperators about what they might want to look at when they're looking at regeneration. So uh, issues of density and species composition are of in very great concern for thinking about the forests of the future and whether our regenerating forests are going to match the overstory, and if not, what those forests of the future might look like. We also looked at mortality and biomass. Uh, another important one is browse impacts. So the uh, whether or not these programs include a, an assessment of browse pressure, browse impact, 
on the regenerating forest. And then change over time uh, is important for thinking about whether we're experiencing some sort of shift in our regeneration, the effects of management, and then the relationship with overstory. And so for each of these, we looked at several of the attributes that we collected in the previous step, and those contributed to whether or not these would be rated as suitable. Um, so for example, density would need species count and plot size. The change over time requires data collected over two or more time steps. Um, so we use some basic indicators for whether these are going to be suitable. And we used a color system on the site that uh, indicates suitability. So if there is sufficient information for that analysis, such as sapling mortality, it's given a mark of suitable with a stark green circle. If it contains some of the information, but it may require um, assumptions or modeling to use, we, we didn't call it partly suitable, we called it partially suitable. And this was a way to indicate that um, it's not completely off the table, but you are going to have to, you're going to be missing something. Um, so we maybe you want to do density and it doesn't have diameter saplings, but at least has counts. Um, so you can do part like a somewhat of a basal area density calculation, but you might have to make some assumptions based on the height of what DBH is um, or vice versa. If you wanted to do a height analysis and you have the DBH, but not the height, you might have to infer the height from the DBH. So there's going to be some assumptions in using that data. And then if the project did not contain the information needed at all, then it's ranked unsuitable. And the other uh, piece that we assessed is how comparable these programs are to FIA. So the US Forest Service has a forest inventory and analysis program across the region, uh, across the nation, and it includes many of these uh, metrics. And so we looked at how similar these programs are to FIA's data collection. So if you wanted to use FIA plus one of these data sets, how hard would that be? And we rated that on a high, medium, or low comparable scale. This is the front page for the Forest Regeneration Data Network. Um, it shows a map. Uh, the map usually, I realize the screenshot doesn't include our pictures of how many programs overlap each state but it provides a um, first pass, a first step into the program. Um, you can compare how studies can be used. This is the analysis component that I mentioned. So it shows for our CFI program in the Northeast Kingdom. Um, it doesn't collect any information on seedling browse, so it's not useful there. It does collect all the required information needed to do uh, density analysis for seedlings and only some of the information needed for mortality. So it might track status, but it may not tag individual saplings sorry, and tag individual seedlings. So you can compare how these studies can be used. Um, you can click here to get more details and the data. Um, you can filter the studies that are shown. And this filter step uh, pops up uh, kind of a list of things that you could limit it by. You can search by keyword. Um, so you can search for a certain species and see if that's represented in the project. You can limit it to certain states or a certain time frame in which data was collected. So if you need to cover specific years, you can use that information. Uh, we did uh, identify the elevation ranges covered by each of the programs. So you can limit by elevation. And then there's a comparable to FIA. So if you want to limit this only to ones that are highly comparable, you can click that box and see just the highest, most comparable versions. On the right hand side, you can uh, filter projects that collect certain type of metrics. Um, so this is pro the overall project metadata, overstory metrics, sapling metrics, seedling metrics, and then other metrics. The, within each of these, there'll be a kind of a presence absence. Did they collect information on sapling browse, on sapling damage? Did they define what a sapling is? It is possible to have sapling data with no definition of what a sapling actually is. Um, so these are, ways to really, if you want to use this to dial into a very specific set of criteria, you can use this. I will say we only have 65 projects in here, so it's possible to get really detailed in your filtering and then end up with nothing. And if that happens, you clear it and start over. Um, so selecting these filters will uh, limit down your list in the table to just those matching uh, projects that you can, that can then go explore further. Um, finally, 
finally. So then this is uh, just showing a little bit more information on what you get when you expand a project. So you can get information on who the contact is. You can view its location footprint on the map by clicking the box under show location information. Um, it gives you information about how long the project's been collected, number of plots, a full species list if we have it, um, and a description. And then on the right hand side is how you can get information on each of the individual data sets. So this lists all the relevant data sets within the project. You can download them directly or view their records on the FEMC data archive, uh, which has a full metadata record for each of those data sets. The other piece that you can do Oops, is to, if you check the boxes on the left-hand side, you can compare the metadata. Um, it's kind of like a shopping cart analysis, so you can compare it to three products. So if you click those, you can end up in this screen, um, click some boxes and click that compare metadata, and I'll show you all this on the web. Um, and you can get to uh, information stacked side by side for different projects. So you can compare up to three projects at a time. Um, you can look across and see how they, for example, I, I defined their seedling plot area. Um, you can look at other metrics. So you can just look at seedling metrics. You can look at just sapling metrics, or you can even download the program methods. Uh, so this isn't their protocol. This is our. This is a PDF of our assessment of their protocol. Um, so you can download that 109 attributes um, into a PDF. Uh, it's not shown in the screen capture, but above this table, there's a button that actually allows you to download a PDF of all of them. So if you want these three programs and you want the assessments for each of them, if you hit the download button there, you'll get a full PDF that compares all three. So that's a, an added benefit too. And then if there's a list on the right that allows you to switch around, if you want to now take off the main natural, natural areas program and put on the Green Mountain National Forest LEMP program, you can add different programs from there. So in doing this, we also, I think, got some interesting uh, read on what's being done right now in regeneration in the region. And I would guess I would also say that I think we know that there are some gaps. So when we look at this map, it shows you how many of these projects where we have spatial information will overlap different states. In some case, we don't have spatial, spatial information, so it's not going to be shown here. But um, you know, there's nothing showing up in Rhode Island. Uh, we have very few programs in New York and Maine, but I don't think that means that there isn't a lot of work being done to assess regeneration. It's just what we were able to get access to. Uh, most of the projects, the majority of the projects came from the Harvard Forest and Hubbard Brook. Uh, they have fantastic data repositories and make a lot of their data available and have a lot of long-term studies. Uh, but we were able to get resources from other programs such as state forest inventory programs, other long-term monitoring efforts like forest health monitoring here in New York, in a, sorry, in Vermont, as well as uh, some other Vermont and regional monitoring programs, uh, research forests such as the Penobscot and the Holt Research Forest, and then other uh, one-off or um, intermittent projects. Uh, there was an ice study done, ice damage study done on the Shaw Mountain in Vermont by the Nature Conservancy that included uh, some pretty detailed regeneration data that we included. Looking at when these projects were started, I think this is an encouraging image. Um, we do have some fairly long running studies. So this isn't when data was collected, just when the project collected its first set of data. So we do have contact going back to the 1930s and 50s. Most of those are going to be in Harvard Forest and Hubbard Brook. Um, but we see this kind of continuous uh, initiation of projects. And 2008 was a bumper year. When looking at how these programs broke for suitability, uh, here you can see by each category or each analysis what the uh, suitability, partially suitable and not suitable ratings were uh, in dark blue, kind of palish green and the, and the uh, greenish yellow. And um, I think this is just uh, not surprising necessarily that we have the most information about the species and the count and the diameter. Um, we don't have as much about treatment information. We definitely do not have a lot of information on mortality. And we're missing, um, I think this is a kind of interesting finding that we are really missing browse impact on most of our studies. 
So these are uh, some some signs of maybe areas that we could be looking to improve, like how do we get more browse uh, assessment into our programs that are already out there looking at saplings? Can we add a um, protocol that will um, enable more assessment of browse across the region? Looking at seedlings, uh, we get more of a shift towards the not suitable category. Um, it's just not as common to have some of the detailed metrics needed for seedling information. So for, for example, browse shoots up, same with mortality and biomass, um, but we do still see some uh, high number of studies that are suitable for looking at composition, overstory comparisons, change over time um, at the seedling level. Uh, potential future directions for the network. Um, I'm actually gonna come back to this. I just wanna walk around the site in real time. Um, so this is our project landing page. So this gives you some information about the project uh, that we did. Um, you can access the tools and the technical report, list the people who contributed to it, um, and ways to explore the products. Uh, if you click on the map, you can get over to the actual portal. Uh, when you land, you get this pop-up that explains uh, at a high level how to use the tool and also provides some pretty detailed methods if you wanna dive into what we did and links to our technical report. Um, and we also get uh, how to use instructions if you need a little more guidance. Um, this shows where we have uh, studies. Um, you can also look at uh, where the project areas are. So these aren't the actual plots, but just the, the spatial coverage of these programs. So you can see we have a lot of concentration in the center of the region and we're not seeing as many. And I will say the caveat is that we don't have location information for every single project. If you scroll down, you can see our list here. If you wanna see more of the seedling analysis categories, you can click this little uh, tray icon, um, same with sapling analysis. So we only show three of them, but you can see all seven if you want, how many, eight, sorry. Um, you can see the different uh, ratings, you can sort by those. So this will show you density that wasn't suitable, density that was suitable. And clicking on one of these circles will give you information about uh, it says that it's suitable and it tells you the um, metrics that go into making that determination. So you can see why it was rated suitable in that situation and why this one was rated in not suitable. If you want to uh, filter the information, clicking this gives you that filter option. So I could say I'm only collecting, only interested in uh, studies in Vermont and um, I'm one, interested in ones that have more than uh, one year of inventory. Uh, you can see some of the other metrics as I mentioned here. And if you click filter, it gives you, it updates the map to show the counts that you have that are suitable and you can see this list below. So these are ones where we have uh, multiple inventories and that have some plots in Vermont. Um, looking at the, long, the Green Mountain long-term ecosystem monitoring project. You can show the location information. It'll actually show you generalized areas where those plots are collected. This actually does include some work on the Finger Lakes National Forest. And um, you can see this full species list. Uh, these are all the species that are assessed within the, um, the project. And uh, I mentioned you can click onto the archive. So if you're interested in say the seedling measurements, uh, it'll take you to a full data set record page on the FEMC archive. Um, this data is only available by request per the instructions of the Green Mountain National Forest. So uh, you can request data here or um, clicking the same button here, uh, it'll open up our request form. So you can request access. In other cases, the subplot vegetation data is available so you can download it and uh, access that data. Finally, I wanna just show how the compare function works. Um, we have uh, these boxes here. So if I wanted to compare CFI and the Northeast Kingdom and the Green Mountain and say the long-term soil monitoring plots, I can click those three and then click compare project metadata. This takes a second and then you get a list of all the potential metrics. So here you can display just the project metadata or just the overstory metrics or all of them together, collapse these down to see what ones you have available. And as I mentioned, you can look across the line to see uh, how these different uh, metrics are comparing across different programs. You can download uh, the full methods PDF, let that run. Um, you can download an individual one as well. 
uh, opening this file. Oh no, I don't want to open with Firefox. Um, so it gives you uh, a list, a set of uh, assessments for each program, as well as a list of the fields that are included in the description. So scrolling through this PDF, you just get a PDF rep representation of what you saw on the website. And if I wanted to switch this around and now look at the Shaw project, I can uncheck one and check the other and then update my list. And after a second, you see it opens up here. You can remove one, so you're just looking at two uh, instead of three. So this is uh, how you can compare these uh, program methods in a more detailed way. So switching back to uh, potential future directions for this network, um, we are working right now on communicating back to our contributors, letting them know that this is uh, now available. I, just, I know that there is a lot more out there, um, so we're going to be seeking some input from folks if they do have uh, additional programs they want to see added in. And then we are fortunate, I think, that we have a potential connection to a future FEMC project. So at our um, winter meeting, our committees identified um, browse and its impacts on forest vegetation as a high priority project for FEMC to consider. So we are looking at starting in early 2021 a project around this topic. Um, and I really see this kind of extending what we've been doing here. Um, so if these are the steps we're going to, the big picture steps we're going to go through is identifying key data sets and analyses with our cooperative that need to be supported and identifying sources of data and methods to add to the network as well as inform those analyses. Uh, and based on those needs, we can develop a methods guidebook. I think this is one piece that we wished we could have done for this project, but we didn't uh, have the time and capacity to, but develop a guidebook to inform standardization of these inventory methods for existing or new programs. Uh, based on what we found for existing data, aggregate and standardize that data to inform a browse impact assessment. And if there are spatial gaps, which I expect there will be, we can collect impact data to fill those gaps and uh, inform that larger regional assessment. So this is a project that we'll be initiating uh, in early 2021, and we're definitely looking for partners and people who are interested in the um, development or outputs of this project. So please get in touch. The second project I wanted to talk about is a continuous forest inventory methods comparison, and this will be a slightly shorter uh, portion. Um, this project actually was started in 2018 and provided some of the framework that we used in the regeneration project. Um, the initial charge was to compare inventory programs. There's a lot of data being collected. Are these usable? And the integration and crosswalking of these monitoring programs can be a significant challenge. I don't, based on who I see on the call, and I don't think this will be a surprise, but we get different baskets of fruit from each state. And what we want is to compare apples to apples and bananas to bananas. And in doing this inventory program comparison can allow us to take a step towards making it easier for everybody to do this instead of making it a an individual task we all do over and over again, we can try and provide a framework where people can be a little bit farther along in comparing programs effectively. There is forest inventory and analysis, which provides a regular spatial grid, um, but the plots are relatively diffuse compared to some of these more intensive state programs. And the temporal scale can be challenging. Some of the state programs are on a more regular interval and some are on a less regular interval. But there's, I think, a need in the Northeast to have a more, um, to enrich what's available through FIA with additional sources of inventory. So when we think about audience, I think it's similar uh, to the previous program. Uh, researchers and analysts can better understand differences. We can help programs seek out new methods or refine their own methods or uh, help people who are interested in starting up new CFI efforts to collect data that will be comparable to other programs. So you're not developing something that's just a little bit different and can't be used with other programs. These are the list of programs that we worked with uh, as part of this project. Um, Massachusetts has a continuous forest inventory program going back many decades. Likewise, there's a pretty long history of uh, inventory in the Baxter State Park. The Maine Ecological Reserve Program uh, Northeast Temperate Inventory Monitoring Network, which is run by the National Park Service. There's a demonstration forest in New Hampshire, uh, several programs in New York, and 
and the Vermont CFI program, which is relatively new and an interesting, somewhat of an outlier, this uh, Shaw Mountain project that I mentioned before, which had an ice storm study, um, but did have some inventory. We wanted to see how this framework would apply in that uh, slightly different context. Uh, this is a, a painting the map with where these uh, inventories, the landscapes that these inventories represent. So this isn't the full plot coverage, but this is the, these are the areas that these programs represent on the ground. So state forests in uh, New York, the reserves in Massachusetts, and um, a couple of spots in New Hampshire and Vermont, and a couple of spots in Maine. Similar to the Regen project, we assessed categories looking at overstory, carbon, regeneration, and forest health. Within each of these categories, we looked at a couple of key analyses that could be done. So for example, in overstory, we could look at diameter distribution or mortality and ingrowth. Carbon could include standing dead or standing carbons, uh, coarse woody debris, fine woody debris, regeneration, uh, just a couple of metrics that were then expanded into the regeneration project and forest health, are there uh, invasive species uh, data, insect disease data, browse or tree health data. The result is an online comparison tool. Um, this is a pretty lightweight uh, website. We didn't, uh, we're, we're gonna, I'll talk about in a little bit how this is gonna be developed further. So this is kind of a, a an interim step, but wanted to get this information out there because we do think it's still useful now and doesn't need this other work that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. The uh, page might look pretty similar to the Regen project. We have uh, categories across the top, so you can click on regeneration. Uh, and see all the assessments of each program for different aspects of regeneration. Uh, clicking there, you can learn more about the program. You can click on the circles to uh, find out why they were rated that way or look across to see how they compare to other programs. Clicking on one of the circles yields uh, information about why that program received the suitability assessment that it did. And you can get over to a full listing of all of the uh, measurement frameworks, or uh, sorry, uh, assessment framework attributes that we captured. This does not have the comparison functionality. Um, so you really just have to click through individual programs, unfortunately. Um, but the full uh, methods, or sorry, the full assessment framework is downloadable. So you can download a spreadsheet that has all of these uh, attributes together from our website. Uh, within each of these, you can look at the metric, the methodology notes, analyses that it is uh, related to in the larger picture, view other metrics, and change which program you're looking at. So switching to the website, um, this is where you land. I mentioned you can download the full assessment spreadsheet. Um, so clicking here, there's a file uh, that gives you the full uh, list of everything that we collected on all these. So this might be useful if you do want to look across a lot of programs at once. I shouldn't try to open Excel on my laptop while it's doing anything else. I apologize and I'll switch back. Uh, did I just end my screen share? Yes, I did. Sorry, one second. Okay, you should be able to see my screen again. I apologize. Uh, so as I mentioned, you can click on a dot. You can get some information about it. Um, if you click view all metadata, it jumps you over to this part where you can see program details. Um, and these are all the attributes mentioned. Um, so you can look at the information that we captured or switched to different uh, programs here. But there's Excel. Backing up. Uh, switching across these different tabs, you can see the assessments for different types of things, so regeneration or carbon assessments. Um, there's only uh, 
10 programs, so it's pretty easy to visualize all this information. Um, clicking on this, again, will just lead you back to here. It gives you some general information about the program, a link to their uh, program page if they have one, and, uh, and a way to switch between them. If you want to learn more about the uh, program, this is a simple about page um, that explains kind of what we did and why we did it. Um, and from the home page, you can also access a, uh, oh shoot, I'm sorry, I was looking for the wrong thing. You can, sorry, from the about page, you can also access the technical report that we put, uh, put together. So this is included in the announcement of this, but this is a full report, including some recommendations uh, for different monitoring programs. So uh, what's next for the CFI project? Um, I'm kind of alluded to this being a stepping stone. Uh, first thing we're doing is uh, hopefully Randy Moore from the Northern Research Station has reached out and he's going to be working to help us add FIA to the tool. Uh, we've kind of wanted to do this, but it, it became uh, too late to include this at the initial round, but we're fortunate to have him going through that assessment framework with us and, and filling that out. So we'll have FIA, FIA on there in the next couple of weeks. Um, the other piece is that this is a stepping stone to a larger effort that we're calling the Northeastern Forest Inventory Network Project. Um, this is funded by the uh, National Institute of Food and Agriculture, and it's kind of this first piece in a bigger puzzle that we're um, trying to put together, which is to create basically a network of data contributors to something that can generate standardized and integrated uh, downloads from these programs. Um, so this is my wonky uh, data modeling approach, but basically to show that this metadata system is going to help inform an access portal where people can get uh, integrated data. So it's not just a download of an access database from this program and some Excel sheets from that program, but uh, some standardized generalized metrics uh, by species uh, for all of these programs together. Um, so this is a pretty exciting project that we're just really ramping up right now. Um, and this methods piece will become a much larger part of the puzzle. Um, the, this is uh, just a page that will be announced soon about this project. So we're um, in the phase of advertising for contributions and uh, people to get involved in our advisory committee. And kind of a brief view on the steps, we'll be um, developing a novel data infrastructure that automates data ingest and provides that search, discovery, visualization, and download. Um, continue to document inventory methodologies for uh, programs that weren't included in the first round. Um, and then propose uh, some standard approaches and data linkages. After getting through those steps, we see this as kind of going back out to the scientific investigation uh, to look at what we can do with this resulting data aggregation. We have a couple of great team members who are going to take that on, as well as formalize and expand a network of collaborators that engage in this data synthesis. So it's not just about the online infrastructure, but actually a community that uses it to answer new questions we have that we need forest inventory data for. And The final piece I'll mention, I don't have a slide about it, but I think I, I just want to put a plug out there because we were talking about this in our staff meeting yesterday, is that this um, methods comparison frame, framework, you've really seen kind of the same approach used in two projects, and they both happen to be forestry related projects, but I think that there is a need and potential niche for this type of assessment and communication in other areas. Um, so you could think about uh, aquatic uh, macroinvertebrate stream monitoring is a uh, approach where people have some standard approaches and some that vary state to state. Um, so you could compare those programs across the state. You could look at phenology monitoring programs and identify all the suitable potential sources of phenology information and compare those methods. So I think this method framework comparison and then making the data and the methods accessible in a standard format could be applied outside of the forest inventory and forest regeneration realm. So um, we're developing a kind of a quick guide to what it would take if you have an idea for this. Um, so if you're interested in uh, how this framework could be applied to other monitoring methodologies, please be in touch. Um, finally, I would like to thank our funders, uh, the US Forest Service, uh, Vermont Department of Forest Parks and Recreation and the Rubenstein School provided uh, funding to make these projects a reality. Uh, the Northeast Generation Data Network has been countless hours on the part of Emma 
and Ali and Julia and Alex to uh, reach out and develop these contacts and then put together this infrastructure. And we're very lucky to have folks like Harvard Forest and Hubbard Brook maintaining data. And we're fortunate that several uh, contributors around the region were happy to ship stuff off to us for this, uh, this project. For the continuous forest inventory program comparison, uh, Matthias Nevins uh, provided the bulk of the work and did a great job building our framework. Um, and Ali and Emma helped package it up. And I listed out all of those folks. I'm not gonna read their names, but we had a great contribution from program managers across the region to not only provide their methods and, and insight, but also review the products that we developed. And finally, uh, Tony D'Amato and Aaron Weiskittle have helped us think about more of the scientific, uh, the need from the research community and how to structure our program. Um, so with that, uh, those are my uh, funding and thank yous. And I have, I think a couple minutes for any questions that you might have. Um, as a reminder, you can use your chat function or uh, raise your hand. I can't actually see if anyone's raising their hand because I can't get this to open up. Sorry, give me a second. Any questions? All right, um, if you have any other issues, my email is up on the screen um, and we welcome any feedback on this tool. And I'll say that these have been released, but we iterate quite a lot at FEMC. So if you thought you were gonna see something and you don't, um, please let us know, because this is a project that I think we wanna keep maintaining and improving over time. So we're looking for input from the community. So don't be, don't hesitate to reach out and tell us what we did wrong and how we can do it better. We'd love to hear from you. Um, with that, I wanna thank you all for uh, joining me today and uh, your interest in these tools. And I look forward to uh, maybe seeing some of you, uh, some, oh, I see, sorry, there's something in the chat. Just pop over there. Thanks, Meg. Um, so thanks so much. Have a wonderful day, stay safe, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.